the brain tends to develop from bottom to top and right to left. Now, I say tends because this is no hard and fast rule. But what we are referring to is that as a developing fetus uh, grows, especially its neurological system, uh, first comes what we call the neural tube, which becomes later our spinal cord. And at the top of the spinal cord, we see emerging what eventually becomes the brain stem. The brain stem is the part of the brain that is responsible for most of our very basic life functions. So breathing, heart rate, blood pressure, temperature, appetite regulation, those kinds of things that we need for basic survival. We have this in common with reptiles. In addition, the brain stem also houses what we call our fight or flight procedures. So those things that become imminently dangerous to us activate networks in the brain stem that then lead to us behaving quite automatically without having any thought whatsoever. So if I'm walking across the street and a car blows on the horn because I'm not watching, I don't think about whether or not to get out of the way. I simply do. From the brain stem, then heading north, again, bottom to top, we think about what we call the limbic circuitry, or circuitry out of which much of what we feel emotionally emerges. We also like to say that emotion is important because, as the word implies, emotion, that which precedes movement, that if we were to take emotion out of the human being, human beings would stop moving. We wouldn't do anything. Emotion then becomes, as we say, the energy around which the brain organizes itself. It then tends to energize other things that are taking place in the cortex, which is then the top part of the brain. So we've moved from the brain stem to the limbic circuitry to the cortex, bottom to top. The cortex is what most people might think of or recognize when they think about a model of a brain, of an anatomical model that they've seen. And the cortex, among other things, is eventually the place out of which emerges our critical thinking, our reflective thinking, our logical and linear thinking. But before it ever gets there, it also is the place out of which emerges things like our creative self, my sense of space and uh, mobility, um, my sense of what I like artistically. Uh, if I walk into a room and just see that it feels good or that it feels cluttered, my right hemisphere is going to have a lot to do with that. And so we see now that even though we are also, that we are moving from bottom to top, we are also moving from right to left. By that we mean that the right hemisphere tends to develop in developing fetuses and even in children up to the age of five to six years the right hemisphere tends to mature more quickly than the left does. And so the things that the right hemisphere is responsible for in most people, things like creativity, visual spatial orientation, nonverbal cues, 60 to 90 percent of all human communication is nonverbal in nature. So most of that communication is taking place in the right hemisphere that has already begun to develop very, very quickly before the baby is even born. It's only later, around 18 to 24 months of age, that my left hemisphere now starts to mature. So my logical thinking, my linear thinking, that one thing follows another, my mathematical thinking, my need for things to be in order, all of that begins to develop later in time.